Sinead Bradley, Rosemary Barton, Jerry Carroll and Gary Middleton. And in the room then we have Nicola Brogan and Tom Buchanan. Okay, can I just remind members that if you have any electronic equipment to do the needful, please. Um, and those on Starleaf, if you want to ask anything, if you want to just use the hand raised facility on Starleaf, we'll try to keep an eye to you as well, just for the real hand going up as well. <laughs> okay. Um, so, just Clark, have there been any delegated votes? Yes, thanks, Chair. Uh, John O'Dowd has delegated his vote to yourself, okay. and that's the only one we have. Okay. So just before we start, I want to welcome Nicola Brogan, our new committee member, who has replaced Catherine Kelly, um, to her first meeting of Procedures Committee. And hopefully it will not be too much of a baptism of, of fire for her. So just, just welcome Nicola today to the committee, and hopefully she'll get to meet you all in person soon. We have apologies then from John, and his vote is delegated. Item two then is the draft minutes of our previous meeting, and if members are content to agree those minutes of the 18th of November. Read. Thank you. Read. Agenda item three then, members, is matters arising. And you'll recall at the last meeting we agreed to write to the speaker in respect of the temporary provisions and the 9.30 a.m. deadline for nominating a proxy. Um, there's a draft letter at page 10 of your pack. However, the clerk received some delayed procedural advice after the meeting pack had issued. And to summarise that advice, it suggests that it would be more satisfactory to amend temporary standing order 112 to reflect the position of the committee rather than suggesting the speaker shows discretion in this matter. I've asked the clerk to redraft the letter to the speaker as well as seek legal advice on a draft amended Stanton order. And if members have any queries, we can. I know that the clerk would be happy to, to respond to any queries that you have around that. It's just really about making it more formal rather than leaving it to the, the speaker's discretion. Go ahead, Gary. Thanks, Chair, uh, and like yourself, I uh, welcome um, Nicola to the committee as well. Uh, no doubt she will find it as riveting as we do. Uh, and, 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 uh, uh, in terms of the amending uh, the standing orders, will that delay the process? Uh, it's just in terms of, uh, I suppose, one of the benefits of doing it informally. Um, was on the basis that I suppose it was the quickest option, um, but in terms, of, I just wanted to know, I no problem supporting that, but it's just how long will that take? Happy for me to come in. Yeah, yeah. Um, Gary, I, I think we can, it's a very straightforward amendment. Um, it's just adding in one sentence to the relevant part of Standing Order 112. So I would hope, I just need to get a, a, a little bit of um, formal legal advice, which I hope I can get in the next few days, and then I could bring that draft amended standing order to the next meeting. Um, so if we can get that agreed before Christmas recess, it can then be in the chamber, you know, for when we come back. So it, it might delay things by a couple of weeks, but only by a couple of weeks. Perfect, thank you. Okay, are you content, Gary? Are members content then that, that we proceed with the new course of action where we will amend the standing orders? Everybody's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure, can I I think Gary has a good point. I don't. I don't. Uh, I think Nick's right. I don't perceive there being any big long delay. But if for someone foreseen there was, can we do both? Can we have a, you know, sort of the discretion of the speaker while we're waiting for this to go into standing orders? Okay. Yes. Um, well. Yes, is the answer to that. You know, you can choose as a committee if, if you want to send the letter anyway. Um, I, I can't, I can't sort of foresee what the speaker's response would be. But the concern is that obviously, if there are the reason why we're looking to to amend the standing order is deadlines are deadlines in standing orders, and what we don't want to be doing necessarily is setting a precedent where a deadline can become discretionary because that could cause issues with other deadlines in the future. So with that in mind, 
It is, I think, procedurally cleaner, for want of a better phrase, to actually just amend the standing order. So, yes, we could still write to the Speaker. However, the Speaker may well write back saying, I'd rather not use my discretion yeah. if you're going to amend the standing order. So, that, that's, I, no, I can't say that is what he would say, but uh, the advice would suggest yeah. that that would be the response we'd get. And I think probably... Yeah, no, that's a fair point. I'll accept that. Yeah, sorry, Chair. No, that, that's good, I, I, I was going to say, mm -hmm. I think probably, to be fair, I know it is a couple of weeks, but we've managed till now, and yeah. I think to set the precedent could be <clears throat> potentially problematic. So are we content then that we, we move forward with, with the clerk coming back to us with the amended Stanton order? Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you, members. Um, Members will also recall that the current temporary provisions to allow the Assembly to continue its business during the current COVID pandemic restrictions, um, Stanton Orders 110 to 116, are due to end on the 31st of January 2021. Um, obviously, the provisions will now have to be extended beyond that date, and we only after Christmas, we won't have a meeting until, am I right to say, the, the 20th, 20th of January? Yes, that's right. So, really, it would be beneficial if we could take a decision in relation to that today, if possible. Um, and I'm suggesting that we would, we would extend those and we would extend them until the summer. I had had some conversation with the clerk about, you know, is that too long and maybe would you extend them to April or whatever, but what he has actually highlighted to me is that if they're extended to the summer and they're not needed at some period, so say March, April time, it's found that they're no longer needed, they can very, that can very easily be dealt with through the business committee, that they can suspend them and then just allow them to run out. So it's not something that is going to be very difficult to deal with if we extend them to the summer and rather than extend them now to March and have to then ask them to be extended again, potentially. Um, so are members content that we would extend them to the summer in light that the business committee can easily deal with it if we don't need them? Content? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, that uh, there's no problem. Uh, no. Okay. Okay, so we can agree that today then. That's great. That's agreed. Thank you. Members appreciate that. Um, agenda item four then is our proxy voting. So. You'll recall that following the briefing from research on proxy voting and the consideration of parties' views, the committee agreed to the clerk to provide an options paper for today's meeting. And you'll find those options at page 13. The responses received from parties and independent members are pages 20 to 70 for your information. And the clerk has identified three options. In the paper, page 14, option A is to simply do nothing and keep Stanton orders and permanent proxy voting as they currently are. Um, option B is to permanently put in place Stanton order 112, which is the current temporary provision for proxy voting. And option C is a more considered approach containing parental leave and or long-term medical absence outside COVID-19. So based on our discussion um, at the last meeting, I would like to actually just take members' views on, on the three options, I suppose. I, th I think that I know where I'm leaning towards, but I would like to hear what other, what other members' views are in relation to the three options. If he's preferably everybody's views, if possible, to be honest, just to have a good rounded view of where people are at. So, Jerry, you had your hand up there to go. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Um, I, I I kind of outlined it there the last meeting, but um, we'd be for option B, um, the one that kind of extended on a much more uh, permanent basis, um, to provide for all sorts of reasons and all sorts of issues why people cannot be in the in the chamber. So, uh, our preference would be yeah, my party's preference would be uh, option B, sure. Okay. Thank you, Jerry. Appreciate that. Gary, were you looking in there? Not just yet, Chair, but I will in a minute. Just an apology, I'm just reading something again, so I'll come back in a second, if you don't mind. Yeah, no problem. Um, anybody else want to 
come in on that? Sure, I had notes. What page? I had notes on this, and I'm trying to find the correct page. What page were are you on in the minutes at the moment? Okay, so or the the options are on page fourteen of your paper. I had some notes against one, and I'm not sure which. There was some wording. Um, sorry, just bear with me a second. What I, what I would say, because uh, I don't want to actually bounce this on members and them to be forced into making a decision today that they're not fully content with it. And Jerry, to, to be fair, that was your position and I kind of knew that's, that was the position you were going to take anyway. So um, if it was if it was agreeable with yourself, Nick, I don't want to put additional work on you, but I would be happy for members to come back with a definitive on their, on their preferred option to the next meeting if you would like that bit of time. Yeah, Chair, can I, I, I just lay out um, a moment because there was something in B that I was trying to query and I can't, I can't lay my finger on it, I must have had a hand note on it. Yeah. But I know certainly I had I had liked the C option and in the party we discussed that and they did like the longer term um, option of discussing C, um, but there would be still some work to be done, not C as, as is. presented now. Yeah, but certainly I think the skeletal place that stays in is a comfortable space for us. Okay, and, and just I suppose to come back on that point that you're making, Sinead, C as is would just be the standing order. It would be the guidance that would actually define, you know, what the circumstances yeah. would be. So yeah, I think I you're that. right, you know, you, you wouldn't have everything in the standing order, but the guidance would be very important in relation to it. Um, and I think probably a, a lot of parties were in C I'm probably between the two. I'm not sure C goes far enough, but um, go ahead, Gary. Yeah, it was just I was just taken back on it as well myself. Well, A, as far as I'm concerned, I think the majority of us would say that's not an option. Uh, B, um, the concern that I would have, and I've raised this in the past, and the party has raised this, is, is around that I, I think that there does need to be some sort of guidance and rules around you know when a proxy should be used. It shouldn't just be. Um, and again, I'm not suggesting members are suggesting this, but there shouldn't be like a willy nilly approach to it where, you know, anybody can just do that. And I know that that's not what anybody here is suggesting for a minute, but it does allow uh, that to be used in that way. The, the option C, I think, uh, you know, as a party, as the closest to what we were sort of in, in favour of as well was around those uh, key uh, parental leave issues, long-term illness, but I think, Chair, it is a sensible option maybe just to come back to this again uh, so that we can maybe have maybe a more considered approach just, um, but as I say, uh, certainly option C seems to be the closest that we've been advocating for as well. Okay. Rosemary, do you... Okay. Yes, Rosemary, yeah. Yeah. Options, option C would be what we would have been considering also, and um, it would be the closest to our thoughts. Okay. Well, can I leave it that we kind of have a, a, a fair idea that probably the majority are looking at option C, but we'll come back with a definitive from each party of their position at the next meeting rather than and use on this now, or, or, yeah. if, or if you want to go ahead and make the call now. Sorry, Morris. I'll allow you to come in just before we... You're on mute, Morris. No. Are we muting, Morris? No. I don't know if Morris can hear us. Can I get the... If broadcasting, just bring Morris into the spotlight, please. Right there. Morris, we can't hear you for some reason. I apologise. Okay. Give us, a, give us a thumbs up if you agree with option C. <laughs> Sinead, yes, go ahead. Uh, Chair, can I just go through the process? Because, you know, 
when I was looking at this, I know SNC sort of is where I'm staring to, but there's sort of terminologies and words in there that I would be a little bit uncomfortable with, even, you know, and I take your point about the guidance, um, but there's some things, maybe softening of some of the language in there um, in terms of how it would appear as an amendment. So as a committee, at what stage, you know, do we actually get sight of what that means in terms of the guidance? Um, because I know obviously the guidance can't be built up until there's a, an agreement on, on where we're starting from. But just in terms of the process, what do you anticipate us doing? Do we try and get a committee view on the amendment and then the guidance is scripted accordingly? Is that how this works? Yes, Sinead. So the, the, once the committee have come to a position on what it is that they want to include, the standing order amendment will actually, as with all standing orders, be fairly succinct in what it says. So, for example, if the committee decided that they wanted to include parental leave and long-term illness, that's what the standing order would say. It would then be, once that's agreed, we would then look at fleshing that out in terms of guidance that we would then provide to officials in saying, well, this is what we mean by that. So the standing order is the first thing that, would be, that we would come to an agreement on, and then we would look at the wording of the guidance after that. Thank you, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. And Sinead, just to say, if, if there was a change of wording that you wanted to suggest, I think we would be open to yes, that. Yes, absolutely, yes. So feel free to, to, to come forward with that. Well, Sorry, Chair, I think it's fair to say that this will be all, uh, whatever option is agreed. Uh, you know, the wording of all of that will be threshed out through this committee, and all the members of the committee will have their opportunity to have an input into that and then come to a final agreement on that particular wording. So, you know, if there's, uh, in my opinion, if there's any other thing that needs to be added in or whatever, then uh, that can be done, uh, provided they what's the agreement of the entire committee that's absolutely right yes okay so are we content that that we'll come back to the next meeting with a sort of definitive on which option we would yeah. we would prefer to go for okay members happy with that thank you um you're happy enough, Clark, to... That's fine, yes. That will come back to the next meeting. No problem. Apologies for if I'm, if I'm adding on to your, your workload. Not at all. Okay. Um, so the next agenda item then is agenda item five. And this is in relation to the LCMs. And members, you remember that um, a number of statutory committees responded to the committee's review on LCMs, as did... Sinn Féin and the Alliance Party and the committee agreed to defer its consideration of the responses to give other parties who hadn't responded the opportunity to do so. At page 72 of your pack is a clerk's covering memo which summarises the responses received. At 79 to 107 are the responses received as a number of parties have still not responded. Um, if members want to provide their views today if they still want the opportunity to provide a written submission, given that we have already put this off, but it is a very important issue, and whilst we have already deferred it, and, and I'm, I'm not keen to defer it again, but if parties were saying to me that they wanted it deferred until the next meeting because they absolutely want to put a response into this, I don't want to prevent any party or individual from having the opportunity to respond. So can I just ask for views on that? If, if you're content that your party will not be responding and that we should just go ahead and, and take your views today, then that's okay. But I think to be fair to everybody, I would like to just get a view on whether we should defer to the next, until the next meeting. Sinead, you had your hand up. Thank you, Chair. Chair, no, I appreciated that we did have the defer. It gave me an opportunity to actually bring it to group, which was helpful. Um, and I do have the committee view now. They, they expressed that they were happy that I bring it and talk to it in committee. But I recognise then and see in the pack that it may have been helpful to have a written version of it just as a reference point for other committee members. I think it's only fair. I'm not sure if that's actually arrived. Maybe with Nick today because um, 
we like previous we did have the written unit and it wasn't submitted but i was speaking to it but i'm happy to speak and move on today and i can as well for the records make that submission if nick hasn't already got it and um, i can make it available to you today chair no problem Sinead. thank you Tom, yeah, well, um, yeah, I've spoken to, to our folk on it, and um, again, there's no written response in this yet, but it can come in, it will come in. Uh, you know, it's, it's something that, as a party, we're fairly content with, the legislative consent motion as it is, and obviously uh, it's something that is used uh, when it needs to be used, obviously, coming from, from Westminster, and whether... Um, whether we use it or we don't use it, or whether it's used or not, the uh, legislation in, in Westminster is going to go on anyway. So uh, we're, we're fairly content with the uh, mechanism that is already there. However, uh, it's something that the party will be putting a response into. So uh, you know, if you want to leave it for to the next meeting, uh, I can keep you the undertaking. We will have a response into it uh, by that. Did anybody else want to come in just before we move on? Rosemary? Yeah. Uh, as a party, we're fairly content, like on a set in relation to his party, we're fairly content with what is in place at the moment, and that would be the view of the Australian party. Okay. Do you think that you will be putting in a written submission, Rosemary, or you just want that recorded? I can get, her, you just I want can that get a submission, okay. but basically, what's in place, that's we're it. happy with. Okay, well, we have that on record. I'm content then that we we will give the two weeks of, because there are two parties that have indicated that, that there will be written submissions coming in, and I, I think it is a very important issue. It's it's also a complex one. I understand that, and it's only recently that I, I got any kind of understanding of LCMs myself. So, um, I think that to be fair, we'll we'll give the two weeks and and we'll we we'll finalise this at the next meeting. Okay, is that okay? Um, in addition to that, just if members would think there would be merit in it, we could get a briefing from Assembly officials on the procedures of the LCM in the new year. I know it was something that we got, Sinead will be aware of this, as, as the Justice Committee, because we had a deal with a, an LCM recently and we did get a briefing from Paul. And I, I, I certainly found it helpful. Um, and I, I certainly don't think it can do any harm. And if members are content, we will. We will get a briefing in the new year, okay? And we could also schedule, if members are agreeable, sessions, evidence sessions with our counterparts in Scotland, Wales, and Westminster, and a set and a session with officials from the executive office after Christmas. Also, um, just again, I mean, Scotland and Wales are looking at L LCMs as well, and probably very much for the same reason that that, that some people here are because there's so many of them coming forward around Brexit. So it would, it would be worth, I think, having um, a view and an understanding of where they're at and where they're thinking is at, and then from the executive office also, because obviously the LCMs have a massive um, implication for ministers within the executive office. So if members are content, we'll, we'll organise for those evidence sessions also. And again, it, it's, it's a good opportunity for us all to get a better understanding of LCMs and the implications of them. Okay. okay. Thank you. Members appreciate that. Agenda item 7 then, in correspondence, there are no items of correspondence to consider. And agenda item 7 then is our forward work programme. And our next meeting will be the last meeting before the Christmas recess period, so that's our Christmas party, Jay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Joking. <laughs> um, so the agenda will include an update on the submissions regarding LCMs, as well as any update on hybrid proceedings, um, which hopefully I think we're going to do a meeting with the officials next week in relation to that, myself and Tom and the clerk are going to do a meeting with the Speaker's office. So. Um, and we'll also be in a position, well, I was going to say a position to agree further extension to temporary standing orders, but I think we've done that agree today. Motion. We'll agree the agree motion. motion. Yes. Fair yes. enough, okay. So the motion for that will be coming forward to the next committee meeting. So with the conclusion, obviously, 
for now, as we, we decided la at the last meeting of the committee's work on member statements and with work on our new arrangements around permanent proxy voting will be, soon be reaching its conclusion. I would suggest that the committee revisit our strategic working plan as there are a number of items that the committee sees as priorities and obviously we have we have dealt with a number of issues and we're now in a position to look at those priorities and see what we'd like to deal with next. Um, so if members are content, we'll ask the clerk to do that also. Okay, content. And that will be in the pack for our next meeting. Okay. So agenda item eight then is chairperson's business and that's the one item that I have to mention is just the meeting that we intend to do in relation to the hybrid proceedings and myself and Tom will give a report of that meeting at the next committee meeting if members are okay. And I don't have any other business unless any other members have any other business that they want to raise at this time. No, I don't see any hands going up. I'm going to take silence as, as agreement. So our final item, agenda item then is just to agree the date and time of our next meeting, which will be Wednesday the 16th of December at 2.30pm in room 29. Thank you, members. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly, Committee Room 29. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly.